The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to today's WCET webcast, Collaborative Degree Design, partnering to build tools to support student success. My name is Megan Raymond. I'm the Assistant Director of Programs and Sponsorship here at WCET. As we go through, if you have any questions, go ahead and enter them into the question box. We'll also have questions that we'll be asking you, and you can provide your responses in the question box. You can access today's slides in the handout pane. You can download the PDF. We will also post a link to the recording, the PowerPoint, and any additional resources to our website. You can also follow along on our Twitter feed with the hashtag WCET webcast. Today we'll move through some speaker introductions, talk about design thinking for student success, discuss the PSU and Barnes and Noble Ed Loud Cloud Partner for Student Success Partnership, discuss new vision for degree planning, and then we'll get to your Q&A. Again, if you have any questions, enter them into the question box and then be prepared to provide responses to our questions to you in the question box as well. Now I'd like to go ahead and pass it off to our speakers, Hans and Sebastian. Please go ahead and provide brief introductions to both of you. Uh, this is Hans van der Schaaf. Uh, good morning, early afternoon. Uh, I work at Portland State University and uh, thank you for being here today. Hi everyone, I am Sebastian Trolles. Um, I work for Barnes & Noble Education Blood Cloud as Director of Products for Student Success. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Terrific, thank you so much for those introductions. So let's go ahead and jump right into the content. Uh, yeah, so today uh, we are going to be talking about uh, how um, universities across the U.S. You know, are facing a lot of challenges to improve student success. And um, Portland State University you know, is also facing some of these challenges uh, and has taken, has taken a unique approach. Uh, so using a design thinking approach, you know, it has forged uh, an innovative uh, public-private partnership with Barnes & Noble Education Blood Club, and we'll be um, talking about how our two organizations have partnered uh, to work on a new platform called the Interactive Degree Planner, uh, what has helped us to make that partnership successful, as well as uh, showing you guys you know, our vision for degree planning. Uh, next slide, Megan, please. There's a little bit of lag. We'll go ahead and move on to Hans's slide. Great. So as I mentioned, uh, Hans van der Schaaf, uh, Director of Projects in the Office of Student Success uh, here at Portland State. We sit within the Provost Office. Um, we'll provide a, a quick in introduction to Portland State. Uh, we're an urban serving university in Portland, Oregon with about 28,000 students. Uh, we have a large proportion of transfer students, approximately 60% and first-generation college students, 20 to 40 percent, uh, and Pell eligible, about 40 percent. Uh, in 2016, 2017, we awarded just over uh, 6,000 degrees. Um, we've been fortunate to have been listed for a second year in a row uh, by U.S. News and World Reports as one of the top 10 most innovative uh, universities in the country, and we're also fortunate to be part of uh, a group that's called the Frontier Set. It's sponsored and convened by the Association of Public and Land-Grant Universities and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, with the goal of helping to improve student success at, stay, at scale uh, across the U.S. Um, and contrary to popular belief, we actually do have great weather here in Portland if you haven't been here. Uh, as I look out the window, it's not raining and it's March, which is a very good day here in, here in Oregon. Um, next slide, please, Megan. Great. So I wanted to provide a little bit of context for our uh, dialogue today. Um, the Office of Student Success uh, has a goal to work across the institution here to focus on degree completion and improving the student experience. In particular, uh, we're really interested in how we close the equity gap in higher education. How do we lead large-scale change while building agreement and consensus and partnership across the university and with other external partners like BNED LoudCloud? And we're also inspired by the question of what if the community framed the problem and, and co-created in developing the solutions? Uh, we, we do a lot of this work under the Rethink PSU umbrella, um, which is uh, work to deliver an education that serves more students with better outcomes uh, while containing costs through curricular innovation, community engagement, 
and effective use of technology. Uh, the Rethink initiative started in 2012 uh, with the launching large project or initiative called Provost Challenge, where we crowdsourced ideas for more than 1,000 faculty and staff that resulted in 24 projects funded by a $3 million uh, allocation of one-time funds. Uh, the results of those included building new online degree programs, uh, focused uh, project on low-cost textbooks, uh, standing up an e-portfolio platform, and working on online process improvements and, and change, such as um, online major change form that we created through the project. Um, an example of some of the results are we launched an online MSW uh, degree program with about 40 students uh, each year and has consistently achieved a 93 to 94% retention rate. Um, and, and our work here, uh, and you'll see it, I think, reflected in our work with the degree planner, is we're, we're focused on organizational uh, ambidexterity. So how do we lead incremental change uh, through projects and other initiatives while at the same time um, responding to even long-term change and innovation that's required uh, of our institution and, and those um, across the country as well. Uh, my particular focus in our work is on project management and service design and product management. Um, and we do that in a lot of partnership with faculty and staff. Next slide, please. So this is a, a picture of some students engaging with us in some work um, in our advising redesign project. Uh, but a foundational emphasis of our work here at Portland State is using design thinking as a process to build a, a culture and practice of co-creation uh, focused on empathy, human centeredness, quick rapid learning, and people-centered change. Uh, it's implemented in many of our projects um, in a way to really help us make sure we're solving the right problem. Um, but also engage students and other stakeholders in problem solving and problem identification and, and problem solving. We, we believe that one of the, the keys to solving the higher education equity gap is really uh, best addressed when we think and act together. Next slide, please. So the interactive degree planner um, sits within a context of, of this work. Uh, this is our, our roadmap of, of the work that we're moving forward. Um, in the spring of 2015, we just started a design thinking process that led to the identification of four main initiatives, um, all under the goal of building a better uh, student experience in support of degree completion. And we ended up with this roadmap that's helping to communicate the progress of our work together. Um, I'll summarize each of the initiatives, uh, and then we'll go into, of course, detail with our, our work with BNET on the degree maps. Um, but the coordinated service network uh, is some work to improve the delivery of student services through a coordinated network of services between departments. My PSU uh, is, is, is work to improve online and mobile services through a one-stop mobile shop and companion desktop site. And advising redesign, which is kind of the foundation of a lot of this work, is really uh, working to create a unified advising framework to increase student self-efficacy and sense of agency and improving the experiences of academic and career advisor, advisors. In terms of degree maps, um, the question for us was, how do we honor what we heard from our students and our advisors here at PSU? Uh, we, we looked at um, understanding really what was going on with degree planning holistically at the institution. Um, and, and what we heard when we were listening to students and others um, was that students think about academics and finances together, uh, particularly for our students um, who have higher financial need as it relates to financial aid. Being able to keep and maintain that aid is something that's really important for our students. Um, also, uh, the ability of students to plan their graduation date is incredibly important, but it's really difficult for them to do currently. Their advisors, of course, are masters at it, uh, but for the students to be able to have some agency and do that on their own is really difficult. And there are also students can get lost in the curricular complexity. We have um, more than 200 degree programs across university, and it can be really challenging for students to find their way through. Um, and what we heard from the advising community is that they're eager to have richer conversations with students and less about the technicalities of degree planning and more about how they can support students in, in aligning their curricular goals with their life and, and career goals. So we looked into the marketplace, uh, and because we had spent so much time listening to users, we felt like we had a pretty grounded approach to what we thought we needed. Um, and we wanted a partner that would take our insights and deliver a solution um, that would fulfill those needs, um, not only for our students, but we felt like for students, urban students across the country. And when we did our scan, there are other degree planning uh, products that, that were out there at the time that we did this engagement. Um, but challenging for us was that um, there was a, a nascent focus on financial aid and financial need. And we were really excited uh, when we ended up connecting with BNED Loud Cloud as a partner. Um, 
because they're really uh, interested in helping us solve this problem of, of bringing together academic planning and financial aid, and also um, leveraging their insights around and data and analytics. Sebastian, maybe you wanna... Yeah, next slide, yeah. Megan, please. Yeah. Yeah, so again, uh, my name is Sebastian Troles, and I work for Bounce on a Ball Education, Lot Cloud. Um, I am uh, in charge of the interactive degree planner uh, for Bounce on a Ball Education. This is a new platform for us uh, that is going to augment the suite of uh, analytic-driven solutions for student success. And in fact, as uh, Hans uh, mentioned, we are very interested into partnering with uh, Portland State University. Uh, we had been looking into the space of degree planning and we're actually very eager to uh, find a partner uh, with whom we could co-develop uh, a solution very grounded into the needs of the users, the students or advisors. So we are extremely interested and appreciative of all of the insights that PSU had gathered so far. So this is a co-development project, um, uh, which is very exciting. In fact, um, I am you know, pretty much embedded uh, within the PSU project team. Uh, I'm here, uh, local in Portland. Um, I come and you know every day at PSU mm. and uh, sit not too far from hand. So you know, he, he and I are pretty much partner in crime in that uh, in that project. Uh, let me tell tell you a little bit more about uh, Lot Cloud and Bounce Sustainable Education. So you might be familiar with Bounce Sustainable College, um, who serve over five million students on 782 campus. Um, Bounce Sustainable College operates a bookstore and is part of Bounce Sustainable Education. And in 2016, uh, Bounce Sustainable Education acquired Lot Cloud to extend its digital offerings and better serve um, college partners. So at Lot Cloud, we build software to improve our learning. And today we are offering uh, three key solutions to help our partner drive better learning outcomes, retention, and affordability. So we have a competency learning platform. Uh, this is our learning management system uh, that enables both credit-based learning and competency-based learning. And we have another product called Courseware that can be customized and combine high-quality OER content, such as open tax, and original content developed by faculty experts, a platform really easy for any instructor to personalize personalize it uh, for their classes. Um, our next product is LotSight uh, for learning analytics. Um, that solution helps to predict student performance in course and provide early uh, warnings uh, to get the right help to the right student at the right time. Uh, we do this via you know, data science, predictive data models, uh, custom report, and actionable insights. And coming soon is the degree planner, which is what we are going to be uh, talking a lot in, in the next few slides. Next slide, Megan, please. Hans, do you want to, to uh, give us uh, a little bit of your perspective on our shared process of sure. creation? Yeah, yeah, it was really valuable for us. So we started out our engagement with Barnes & Noble and planning a nine-week discovery uh, consulting phase where the goal of it um, was to see if we could um, identify what a minimum, minimally or minimal viable product could be at the end of it and spent a lot of time listening to advisors, listening to students. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about the teams from both of our, our organizations that were involved because this is very much of a, a team effort here at Portland State and we have a, a, a really dedicated and, and critical core team uh, that's engaged in, that includes advisors and registrar and, and, uh, and, and, and IT, um, other folks from around campus as well. Um, but it was really important for us to come together in this co-creation process, not only to figure out what an MVP could look like, but, but perhaps even more important uh, to figure out if we could work together. Um, that, that trust is really important. Yeah, and I think you know, I, I, I can echo what Hans uh, described uh, um, you know, for us as partners. You know, it was really important that we had like, a common framework um, to kind of take all those insights that PSU has uh, and then go through the motion of effectively, you know, designing a solution that was going to fulfill those needs and then working together, you know, to deliver that. Um, <clears throat> the two organizations recognized that even if PSU had done a lot of groundwork uh, you know, since 2015, that it would be a good idea to still have a, a discovery slash, you know, consulting phase, as Hans mentioned, you know, for the first nine weeks of the engagement. 
Um, and you know, the objectives were you know, to validate the hypothesis that came through the research that PSU had done and start kind of teasing out solutions, you know, potential solutions, so that quickly we could um, converge on what we call a minimum viable product, like a set of features that would form really the first version of the product. Um, I think there was also another objective that your know, partners sometimes may, might be underestimating, and, and maybe some people in the audience may be relating to that. Uh, it's a big investment. Uh, it's a big investment for Portland State. It's a big investment for uh, Bonds and about Education. We are looking at that, you know, for the long term. Uh, we are looking at it as a very essential part of the suite of solutions we have for student success. And so one of the other objective was for us to figure out if our two organizations were actually going to be a good fit. Um, you know, we wanted to, you know, to make sure that the two teams were going to be set up for success. And not necessarily from a contractual perspective, but really from a, a people standpoint, you know, uh, from the culture of our two organizations. And so from, you know, Barnes and Noble Education's perspective, um, uh, that's often what we like to do, uh, have some, you know, consulting phase uh, with a, a, an institution to, you know, kind of gauge out how ready that institution is and make sure that, you know, we are setting things up for success and um, uh, getting ready for actually, you know, the deployment of one of our solutions. Next slide, Megan, please. So this is just a quick uh, snapshot of what the nine-week period look, looks like or looked like when we did it um, about a year, starting about a year ago. Um, you'll see some elements of our focus on design thinking here, uh, user-centric, uh, an iterative design process, um, and really building momentum and commitment with stakeholders at the university and, and within BNET, uh, LoudCloud, to move the project forward, um, culminating it in week nine on a go-no-go. Um, decision about whether to move into a contracting phase together. Sebastian, anything to add? No, I think, uh, you know, it was, um, you know, we've seen the next few slides, kind of the, the rhythm and the tempo, uh, particularly, you know, between week, um, uh, you know, four and eight. Uh, and Megan, maybe if you can move to the next slide. Yeah, it's, yeah. So what, what was really essential for us was kind of getting to that rhythm of, uh, you know, translating insights from user into um, some workflows and visualization of, you know, what the experience could be uh, very quickly and then test that with users and refine it. Uh, and I think, hence, that was particularly useful. I, I know you, you spent mm -hmm. a lot of time on that. Yeah, we did. I think the ability, you know, the, the slide title here is From Idea to Learn. And I think that the, the learning of the organizations about what the technical constraints and possibilities were at the same time, what were the constraints that we had here within our systems, um, you know, in particular, digesting and, and, and using the degree audit information is no small feat. And if you're talking with other possible partners out there, I would guess that they're what we heard, and I'm sure it's still true, is really understanding with the different degree audits and student information systems, how to, how to make it all work together. It's no, no small technical challenge. And so the ability to kind of quickly work through that together was really important. Yeah, and I think, you know, to echo that complexity, which you know, we are going through, uh, you know, to, to me, one of the, the challenges, how do you actually hide that complexity? Mm -hmm. And how do you surface an experience that is extremely easy to use very intuitive, very inter interactive. It's not one size fits all in terms of degree planning. Uh, and I think the, the exercise that was done during the discovery phase, which I think is going to be benefiting PSU and, and a lot of other partners, is try to get that experience and validate it with users, making it as easy as we could, you know, hide the clutter, surface up what are the metrics and the information that are really essential to students to make a decision, as well as on an ongoing basis, essentially executing their plan. Next slide, Megan, please. So for our discovery phase, you can just wanted to walk you through a sense of what it looks like uh, for the teams involved. And I think that, you know, given that um, the degree planner is evolving, and I think this remains true even if, you know, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're lucky in some ways in that we're starting from the very beginning of partnering with BNED, but 
I think the way that they work together with institutions and really look at that discovery process will remain true, whether it's us or working with another institution. And so the commitment from us is really like with a lot of these, these large scale projects is fairly robust. So you can see from our team, um, you know, a lot of advisor uh, input, they have a daily exposure to the planning process, interacting with students, and they're the, will be the primary institutional users of, of the degree planning software. Um, the registrar, an incredibly essential subject matter expert um, for the curriculum, the degree programs, in addition to, to really um, understanding the technical complexity of the audit. Um, the, the folks here have an out, it's lucky to have an outstanding team that really makes a lot of this um, possible. And of course with IT, I'm really providing support and access to the data and systems that are necessary to uh, ingest and then output a plan um, was critical as well. Yeah, and I, and I think I would echo the importance of the um, registrar office. I mean, I think for anyone looking into degree planning, um, the subject matter expertise, um, you know, from the registrar team is, is absolutely essential. Uh, while you know you can work with the IT team into getting the data and you know connecting the various systems, uh, you've got to make sense of the data and make sure that the planning engine, essentially, which is the core of the platform, is reflecting the various requirements from the degree of the system, the business logic, and also you know some specificities of the curriculum of a given institution. Um, for example, PSU has. Um, and have been recognized being very innovative with um, you know, uh, university studies. And that has you know, a set of requirements that you know, we had to take into account and kind of reflecting that you know, specific curriculum that is highly valued you know, at PSU. Um, on, the bounce, on the bounce on the education side, our specialty is product creation, product development. And so we actually brought uh, on site for the nine week discovery phase uh, a cross functional team. Uh, we had a product manager on site that was essentially uh, gathering all of the requirements, uh, translating those insights from user into um, uh, feature definition, functional requirements. Um, we brought uh, a user experience designer, and the function of the UX designer for that discovery phase was really rap what we call rapid prototyping. Some of the screens that we shared with you earlier in terms of whiteboarding like a workflow and going then to like a wireframe that is essentially mocking up what the experience could be that was really essential to kind of help visualizing what the experience could be and then testing it with users so having a ux designer was was like a big part of making that discovery phase a success um, we had a system architect which is a fairly kind of traditional resource that you bring uh, for those type of uh, exercises to really scope out um, you know, how to actually make it happen from uh, a, a technology perspective, uh, how to architect the platform and articulating the various systems and data that we need to get access to. Next slide, Megan, please. So now to get the two teams to work efficiently and, and really maximizing the resources, um, we also had um, project managers on each side of the organization. And in fact, not only for the discovery phase, but it's, it's true to this day, we have uh, two project managers, which essentially are Hans and I. Uh, we uh, work together on a daily basis, and it's really about jointly driving priorities and resources on each side of our organization. And I would say particularly on the um, uh, Portland State uh, side, uh, you know, the people that we are working with from the office of the registrar or the advisors, they have a lot of other duties. They are competing um, projects. Um, they have a large amount of responsibilities, you know, to uh, get, you know, the, the regular processes and curriculum at PSU, you know, to, to function. Um, so, you know, it's an essential part for us, you know, to make sure that um, we can, you know, allocate the resources, you know, properly, that we don't overwhelm the team, and that that whole kind of collaboration process is pretty smooth. Um, so, a lot of communication. Um, I must say that, you know, as two partners, I've, I've really appreciated the transparency and the openness of our partnership. Um, you know, we strongly believe that be good partners, that means to share, you know, the good stuff and the, the more challenging aspect of any given project. And, being able to anticipate roadblocks and being able to work you know
know, together to unblock the teams has been really essential. Uh, next slide, Megan, please. All right, so, so we've talked about our organizations. Uh, we've talked about how the, the, the realizing the need for a degree uh, planning solution came up. We discussed the process. So let's kind of dive in a little bit more around the challenges uh, of students at PSU when it comes to degree planning. What, what did we find? Uh, the team interviewed a lot of students and advisors. Um, and that really kind of set the path of you know, the features and the experience that we wanted to deliver as part of that solution. Uh, we also made sure that we were interviewing uh, a representative set of the very diverse population and all at PSU. And um, not only you know, the diversity of the population, but it was also an eye opener for us to talk to students that may be studying part time and working part time. Um, they have a family, they juggle a lot of their use priorities and, and really, you know, understanding um, you know, how they are dealing with, you know, kind of creating a plan for themselves and, and the challenges of, you know, getting to that plan and executing it was, was very interesting. Common threads emerged. Um, there are a lot of competing priorities. Um, Hans mentioned that the curriculum is complex. Uh, there are many options many types of degrees, uh, many ways of graduating. Um, and then everyone is different. Um, everyone has a different, you know, um, what we call like a, a current state. They may be transferring from a community college. Uh, they may have stopped their, stopped their studies uh, and then resuming them. They may have course history. Uh, and, you know, it's not one size that fits all. And therefore, kind of the need of that interactivity and taking into account, um, you know, course history, for example. Um, every student we spoke with uh, at or coming to PSU, um, they, they knew when they wanted to graduate by. And so, you know, the graduation date is one of the strongest planning factors that we found, you know, across all of the students. Uh, and so being able to crystallize in the tool that graduation date, making it very, visible, accurate, trustworthy was, was really essential. Uh, they want to know when they will graduate. They want to know how they will graduate. So showing kind of that start to end path, um, you know, it's very reassuring to them. Um, you know, essentially, they, they want to create a plan that is going to give them the confidence that they are going to be okay. The other thing that we, we uh, found out is um, when students are uh, meeting with their advisor for the first time, they essentially spend most of that advising session on a piece of paper, writing down the plan, and as Hans said it very well, advisors are masters at doing that. And so we saw an opportunity to actually help that process and really enrich that interaction between the student and the advisor. And, you know, I look at advising as an art and a science, and we thought that the technology could simplify the science piece so that essentially students and advisors can focus on the art form of advising and really spend that quality time uh, you know, together, which is so hard to achieve today. Next slide, Megan, please. So that led to a lot of thinking about how could we be changing the student experience for, you know, uh, for the better. Um, uh, you know, clearly the the fragmentation of the planning information, uh, whether it's on the website, at the advising office, there are resources, but not in, not in one place, and that makes it, you know, um, a bit challenging for students, you know, to to find the information, and and that's affecting, you know, their faith into PSU or, or even, you know, the the planning process and even in their ability to effectively, you know, execute the plan. Um, so, you know, being able to create a plan, uh, understand it, you know, discuss it that increases uh, student confidence. And that, that's essentially what they're asking is uh, a simple platform to create the plan, to own it, you know, get the agency over, over there, the planning process. Um, so we looked at, you know, how could we effectively bring different elements into uh, one place, um, such as, you know, your course history, your financial aid eligibility, um, showing you the various steps for you to graduate and, and the graduation date, um, taking into account what you've done already, 
uh, especially if you're a transfer student, uh, was essential. And then looking at mechanism to enrich the student and the advisor in the time together. Next slide, Megan, please. So after the discovery phase, you know, we kind of form like a new vision for degree planning, and this is what uh, advanced on about education. We are now uh, marching toward, um, you know, leveraging our uh, analytics-driven platform uh, and data-driven uh, um, abilities. We are going to be um, pretty much, you know, empowering students to chart their own pathway to a career, uh, be able to compare various paths, you know, for time and cost, by changing you know, which degree program they want to use, a credit page, time to graduation, and, and then easily collaborate with advisor. That's our, you know, kind of the fundamental element of the degree planner. Um, next slide, Megan, please. So moving on now from you know, the vision to uh, effectively designing and, and, and delivering. Um, here on the screen, you're looking at uh, one of the essential uh, screen of the degree planner, which is our final design, that is actually showing um, what we call the term by term view, which is how students can view their plan. Uh, there are three tabs. One is the actual uh, four year uh, kind of term by term view. You're seeing you know, year one here on the screen. There's another tab for you know, financial aid, uh, which is where you get information about your financial aid eligibility. And then there's another one to uh, see your progress on uh, requirements to graduate. Um, and that's another piece that we looked at, which is the planning, getting to a plan is just the first step. The first step, it's definitely not uh, you know, the end of the journey. It's kind of the beginning of the journey. Um, you know, keeping your plan up to date, being able to refresh it as you go, being able to modify it as you go uh, uh, is essential. And these are all features of the uh, degree planner we are coming up with. So, you know, there are basic functionalities um, that we are enabling. Uh, so you can, you know, create a plan that is reflecting your registration information. Uh, you can plan your path, you know, from you know, first day to graduation. Uh, as I said, you can uh, you know, move courses from a term to another term. You can modify your plan. And the plan is taking into account the curriculum. Uh, the business logic. It also takes into account course availability, which was really essential. Uh, and that actually led to some um, you know, business process changes at PSU to work with faculty into um, having a two-year window in terms of you know, course availability, which is a big, a big input to the planner. Um, you'll be able to select prerequisites, resolve course groups, so for example, uh, PSU students are required uh, to take a foreign language, and there are multiple options. Uh, directly in the domain of view, you can click and select you know, one of the languages uh, that is available for you know, the, the given term and catalog year. Um, as we mentioned earlier, um, one of the key uh, differentiation of our degree planner is you'll be able to create uh, as many plans as you wish um, you know, by changing um, you know, the degree plan, uh, the degree program, sorry, the major, your credit pace, in which terms you want to study. And all those plans can be generated very quickly, and then you have the ability to effectively compare plans. Um, one of the other unique features we have is we are surfacing your financial eligibility for a given plan, and that was a key element um, that we wanted to achieve, you know, partnering with PSU, and we spent actually a lot of time developing that. Next slide, Megan. Um, so on that slide, we, we call it creating moments of magic, and you know we looked at all right beyond the basic features that you would be expecting from a degree planner. What are some of the kind of unique features, or how can we be delighting our users, students, and advisors? How could we actually take it to really the next step? Um, the feature I mentioned earlier, being able to compare uh, different plans in a very simple form. So you'll be able to select up to three plans and get kind of a summary table. Um, every time we've showed that, and we actually we showed that at the uh, WCT conference uh, in Denver last year in October, and I remember the audience, we had several people coming to us after the presentation and saying, wow, this is amazing that you can do those what-if scenarios within a few clicks, that's extremely useful. 
Um, we, yeah, this is Hans. I'm going to interject here. We hear that this is the, the one of the and the magic really is an accurate way to describe how I think students and advisors when they see this this screen. We were doing a usability test even on Friday with with a student who um, had just changed from electrical engineering to business, and I think it, he had just done it a month or two ago. And he was like, "Wow, I wish that I would have had this because I one of the the reasons why I changed was because I wasn't sure if I could finish electrical engineering in a time that I wanted to." And you know, his comment was seeing uh, the ability to plan, compare plans in a screen like this would have just made a tremendous difference. And he said he probably would have stayed in electrical engineering if he would have had a clear path. Um, so there's a lot of excitement about this, um, both from students and advisors. Yeah, which is great. Which is great to hear that. You know, what was true a year ago is still true today, and that's just you know validating kind of the solutions we are coming up with. Um, so you'll be able to see graduation dates, financial aid eligibility, as well as your progress you know, directly in the plan. Uh, we worked a lot on how we could help students and advisors to collaborate together on a plan outside of meeting face-to-face. -face. Um, they can also do that you know, in person, of course, but from the planner, you can very easily share a plan, and then the advisor can see the plans for a student that can suggest changes um, and then help the student, you know, uh, benefit from, you know, again, that art form that I mentioned earlier, where you know, obviously the technology can, can, can only take it so far and, and the human touch is, is still essential. Um, and last, you know, uh, the plants will be refreshed. Um, actually, you know, uh, every day, you know, we checked what data has changed for a given student, uh, has course availability changed for a faculty maybe. Uh, and then we inform and help students to actually keep their plan up to date and as well as, you know, letting them, you know, make changes you know, if they want. Next slide, Megan, please. So we are really excited about the degree planner and uh, the upcoming rollout on campus uh, that's coming, uh, you know, a little bit later this year. Uh, this is just a starting point for us. We actually see a lot of opportunities to derive from the degree planner. Uh, from our, you know, uh, other platform that we have at Bantan About Education, we see a lot of synergy uh, that is going to uh, come up, you know, from adding the degree planner. Uh, at the institution level, once you have your body of students that are telling you what their intent is and, and planning effectively, you know, their degree, then they are um, really interesting opportunity to actually do capacity planning. Uh, so look at um, you know, what are the courses that are most in demand or will be in demand in a given term to help actually the institution adjust, you know, staffing, classroom capacity, uh, and, uh, and kind of understand, you know, the demand, um, you know, for, for given uh, courses. So a lot of opportunities there. And I know that uh, there is a particular interest into using that to facilitate some of the budgeting process, which is great. Um, we are also going to um, be looking at how we can better capture the intent of the student. So the, the starting point of a plan uh, is today uh, a degree program and a major, but tomorrow it could be much broader than that. And you know we could be focusing on what career you're actually interested in. Uh, if you want to be an, electric, an electrical engineer, what are the various paths that we can offer you and then you can make a selection. Um, the the um, the last um, aspect on that slide is really coming from the synergy that we have with lot size and the expertise we have in data science, where we can start layering uh, effectively an analytics and predictive models to help the students making the right decision. So, for example, if they are selecting uh, elective courses, um, if they are interested we could offer them some guidance on which one might be a better fit for them. You're kind of driving that um, you know, success indicator uh, into the selection process. Uh, we could even go um, a, step, uh, a step further, which is you know, if you want to know what is the fastest, cheapest, with the highest chance of success plan, um, you know, we might be able to actually guide you in that direction and, and give you some help. So many opportunities. Uh, you know, I think I'd like to thank the, the Portland State University team. You know, it's been a, a, an incredible partnership so far. Um, we think, you know, their design thinking approach has been, you know, spot on, really essential. Um, a kind of joke, which is going to sound a little cheesy, but I really be believe in it, that, you know, what we are 
um, the degree planner we are coming out with, it's been designed by students and advisors, and it is for students and advisors. So um, I think, you know, uh, again, lots of opportunities. We think it's going to benefit PSU tremendously, uh, and we know that there are many institutions out there, you know, be it to your college or for your university, that could be very interested uh, in our solution. So if you want to know more, please feel free to contact Bantam About Education. Uh, you will find our information in the slide deck as well as on, on the webinar page. Um, I would be happy to address any of your questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Hans and Sebastian, for sharing this information about the collaborative degree design program. And it's very student focused. I love the involvement from the get go. So I'm going to go ahead and ask the aud audience to start putting in their responses to a question. And while they're doing that, Sebastian and Hans, I'll ask you a couple of the questions that have been asked by our, our attendees. So to the audience, what are the challenges faced by your students and advisors when it comes to degree planning? And you can respond by just entering into the question box. And then Hans and Sebastian, let me scroll up here and I'll get to some of the questions. From John Jordy, he's wondering, regarding the cost, how are they able to determine the cost? Are they able to include students' financial aid? So this was moving back several slides. Yeah, this is Sebastian. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to uh, to address this one and Hans can chime in. So um, we are effectively for a given plan going to be able to check on their financial eligibility, which is um, looking at uh, like Pell Grant eligibility, number of credits to be eligible for the uh, financial aid, as well as uh, loan information. Um, cost itself is something that uh, we are looking into. Uh, it's part of our roadmap. Uh, it, it is not going to be part of the first version, but it's something that uh, we know students are very interested in knowing kind of the end-to-end uh, -end cost of their degree and, and definitely, you know, one of the next steps for us to, uh, to address. Yeah. I think I'll add to that, you know, we, we went in with the assumption that even before we engaged um, Barnes & Noble, we knew that there was a connection between degree planning and, and financial planning and and one of the insights that the project team has is we had gone in with the problem was really around cost, and that's part of the problem, about understanding year by year what my degree will cost me. Um, but one of the things we heard loud and clear from our students is an emphasis on financial aid and understanding if the courses I'm taking and, and the degree plan I've charted will keep me eligible for my aid. And so that's why we were excited to prioritize that, um, but I think we're also interested in, in forecasting costs for students as well. Terrific. So again, audience, we'd love to hear from you. I entered the question into the chat box, so you should be able to see that and then provide your responses into the question box. Moving on to the next question from John. Is the dashboard in the student LMS or an external dashboard? Where is that dashboard housed for Sebastian and Hans? Yeah. You want me to take that one? Um, so I'm just go ahead. Go, go ahead. Yeah, so it, it, because that's a very interesting it is. question. Actually. Yeah, we've had it in the past. So, so part of our work, you know, when I introduced and shared our roadmap, we talked about MyPSU, which is our campus app and, and, and desktop corollary site. And part of the, the, the issue that we're working on around student experience is how to help uh, findability or navigability of, of online tools for students. And we know that um, there's a proliferation of information on our general website. And so we're really trying to surface those things that are most important for them, the things they use most often. And there's some interesting research around this topic um, from ECAR at Educause about showing that students who um, have some systemic barriers to accessing higher ed can benefit from these kinds of, of tools. So, so to answer your question, our, our current thinking is it'll be available through MyPSU, um, probably on a homepage feature that's probably uh, a, a tab on degree planning uh, because a degree planner is kind of the anchor platform, but there are other things that, you know, we have transferology and other tools that kind of fit within that ecosystem. Um, so we imagine that that'll be where it is. Um, we've had some good, healthy debates about progress um, for students and what does that look like if we didn't include it at all. Um, students, when they tell us, you know, they want to see progress um, that they're making in their degree degree plan, they draw bar charts and pie, you know, uh, pie graphs and things like that. But um, it's possible that just having the graduation date is, isn't helpful enough. That really is the progress they're making. Um, there's other things around like nudging and other information that we've thought about down the road about how to support students. Um, 
but to answer your question, we think that the, the, the way into the degree planner will be through our my PSU. It's, it's kind of like a light portal, if you will. Uh, yeah, I think what's interesting in that question is we've been discussing a lot about what does that mean to introduce uh, the degree planning tool uh, to you know students and advisors? Where should it live? Um, how does it change as well some of the existing um, proce processes? I guess you would you would call it like orientation, for example, uh, kind of raising awareness about you know we have that new solution, you know the degree planner. Um, how do you also um, adjust the advising practice to actually use a platform? Um, yeah. There's no real technical limitation on where the platform can be hosted. Um, you know, it will be mobile friend friendly. Uh, it's a, you know, uh, it's a web interface, uh, so it could be integrated in, in many different places. I think, I think the question for you know institutions is, you know, how do I raise awareness? How do make that an integral part of the suite of tools that are made available to students and advisors. And then, you know, technolo technology again needs to be um, fully integrated into business processes and, and practices and policies, uh, which, you know, drive a lot of internal discussion. Terrific. Another question from an audience member, Holly. She's wondering if instructional designers were involved in the project. Yeah. Uh, the answer is no. Um, however, the the notion of designing user experience within this platform has been with us from the very beginning. It aligns well with our focus on design thinking um, uh, and the UX uh, user experience expertise that, that uh, Barnes & Noble Loud Cloud brought to the table during the consulting phase, discovery phase, and then again in our work and build on the product as well. Um, so from the little bit I know about instructional design, a lot of common, common themes to UX, obviously very different fields as well, um, but, but no, they, they were not involved. Great. And then John had a comment when we were discussing the dashboard. Uh, one of the challenges and concerns is the actual availability of the courses. So if a student is okay. using this tool and selecting a bunch of courses, but then they can't enroll in the courses, this is very impactful onto their success and their ultimate graduation date. You want to yeah, comment on that? Great point. Yeah, just a, a comment. I'll, I'll kick this off. Yeah, that's a great, great point, John. Um, you know, part of our hope is that through the the ability to forecast demand will help to, we can help departments minimizes, minimize the chances of having um, course availability challenges. It will still be an issue, likely even, even with that, and that is something that we will have to really focus on. Um, we're aware of it. At this point, we're just trying to scope it and get it launched, but it's a very valid concern that we have for students as well. Yeah, I think there are two, two aspects to that. You know, one is, um, what we know from other institutions is, you know, the ability to actually plan courses ahead, you know, is a, you know, could be a challenge. Um, I know that, and I've witnessed it, that the PSU team had to make, you know, business process changes and working very closely with faculty to really help faculty, you know, do that planning ahead of, of courses. Uh, so that's an essential, you know, factor, you know, factor if you want to be able to plan ahead and uh, enable your students to plan, you know, a two-year degree or a four-year degree, you know, you, you need to give them information about the availability of courses. Um, in fact, you know, in the, so in, in the degree planner we are going to have, we have that two-year window where we are pulling in the avail availability of courses as informed by faculties. And then the, beyond the two years, um, we inform the user that, the courses are, are tentatively available. But the thing to address that in the tool is on a daily basis, we check the availability of courses. And if something has changed, um, the student is informed and the plan can be refreshed instantly to actually refer, reflect you know, the change in availability of the courses. Great. And my colleague Lindsay had a question. Would you consider inclusion of instructional designers as a possibility if others pursue this type of degree planning? Or were there any other constituents that should have been involved? No, 
know, I think in terms of constituents, um, you know, again, the and you know, having <coughs> sorry, having advisors, having um, subject matter experts of the curriculum from the office of the registrar are really essential partners, you know, for for that type of solution. Um, along that, you know, the um, academic innovation teams, student success office are also essential to drive the change management process of introducing a new platform. Um, you know, I, I think instructional designer, um, you know, clearly if, 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 you know, that could, you know, help or fit better the culture of a given institution, yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't, you know, uh, involve, you know, such resources, definitely. Great. Well, I want to thank you both. This was very, very informative. And thank you to our audience for your questions and your participation. You can contact Hans and Sebastian at the emails below. And I just want to mention that WCET has lots of wonderful content on our website. If you haven't visited, we actually just updated a page on what you need to know for cybersecurity practices. We're constantly adding new content there. Our leadership summit is coming up in Newport Beach, California in early June, and the topic is ensuring ethical and equitable access in digital learning. And our call for proposals will open in mid-March, which it looks like we are actually on that date technically, but I'm working diligently and we should get that posted soon. So stay tuned to our, our WCET news if you're a member and visit our website for more information early next week. Again, this webcast was recorded and we will send you a link as well as post it on our webcast archive page. And don't miss next week's webcast, Accessibility and Courses and Services, this exploration begins. Thank you to our WCET supporting members and our sponsors. And again, thank you for being part of this webcast today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.